Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode, as you can see, we are beginning with the supply vessel and making sure that it gets on its way to Mars. I've done part of the ion engine burn, its current trajectory has its uh, interplanetary and uh, we're just boosting it up more. You can see the curve there and we need to turn on the methane oxygen engine so that we can get, our trajectory, uh, get this 1300 or so done. And my hope is that instead of uh, having this one do a whole lot of corrections along the way, it'll just get on its way to Mars direct so that we can just focus on the crewed vessel. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult doing the long, you know, long ion corrections uh, bouncing between the two because so they might interfere with each other. So, yeah, and of course, uh, on uh, the Mars Transfer Vehicle 2, the water recycler system only functions when we're focused on it, so I have to keep that in mind. So, yeah, anyway, uh, but we are 19 minutes away from the plan burn, but the plan burn was over, well, you can see we've it's like there, so it's not really relevant anymore. Um, so let me replot this quickly, and then we will do the burn. Okay, so our new plot is 1,244 meters per second, and let's turn to the node. And again, this is the supply vessel. Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 was the one that we transferred out into interplanetary space last time. And Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 is the one that's coming back, right? It wasn't able to make orbit around Mars, but uh, we have a maneuver for it in 52 days that allow it to return to Earth. And then we'll uh, salvage it uh, as much as we can. And uh, yeah, we'll have to take a look at what will need to be changed about it to make it more usable. Probably a nuclear reactor will be tossed on board, maybe. We'll see. But uh, yeah, that is coming back. But basically, we'll just refit these two Mars transfer vehicles because it looks like I can only manage one of them at a time. And basically, while one is out, like the other one is still out at Mars, uh, the other one will be making its way over there. Uh, so they'll be cycling back and forth. They're not Mars cyclers because they have to make orbit around Mars and then orbit around Earth again. But they'll be going back and forth between the two. And then we'll just uh, take pieces off that uh, don't seem to be what we want anymore and then refit them with new pieces as long as they're the ion ships. Eventually, they'll probably not be carrying the peoples. They'll just be carrying cargo. And then people will go on, you know, like nuclear powered stuff, you know, NTR stuff or something like that. So we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, so f f right now uh, we'll basically only have two ion ships, I think, because I can't handle more than that uh, during any given window. Uh, unless I figure out some way. Anyway, here we go. Uh, ignition. Such as it is. This is going to take a while, too. I mean, that's why we're starting off uh, well ahead of time. So, let's go time over a bit. And I'll see you at the other end of this. Well, we're mostly through the burn, but I've noticed a gap between the methane and oxygen sort of developing. I'm going to shut down the methane oxygen engines right now. A little bit of sliding there. Maybe it's because the RCS thrusters use a different mix and they were doing a lot of that because I was doing physical time warp. I'm hoping that the xenon gas can do with, uh, deal with the next 200 meters per second, we'll see. So we'll be launching a bunch of rockets with the other payloads coming up and that'll, that'll be the rest of this episode and probably some of the next episode, maybe all of the next episode, depending on... Uh, how much I want to send during this window. It looks like I had better just wait until we get into interplanetary space to uh, plot it again at this point. It's not... The the node is probably just nonsense at this point. Uh, I'll replot it. I'll replot it right now. Okay, that should be good enough to start. Okay, so we'll hold it right there. And we just need to do another 192. Hold it 
hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, we only have to do 192. Oh, 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 there it is. We actually have an encounter with Mars. Amazing. Okay, I think uh, we'll do. We'll have a minor mid-course correction. Is probably for the best. So shut down those, and I'll have it bring up its orbit at uh, opportune time. Just halfway there should be fine. It's not a huge difference we've got here. Even for the ion engines, that shouldn't be too taxing. Okay, so in 90 days, we will do that correction. It will arrive in 206 days. And when we get there, we are going to capture using how much? Mm, 864, which we should have in the methane and oxygen right now. So that is the plan. Uh, we'll probably at Apoapsis try and lift up the orbit a bit to mitigate how much we actually need right at Mars, but we'll see. But for now, we'll take the mid-course correction burn and reassess once we get there. So, supply vessel 1 is on its way out, uh, well away from Earth right now. Uh, still technically in Earth SOI though, and so we will pay attention to it again in three months. Okay, so our first launch is going to be a Mars tug, just one of our normal tugs being launched to Mars, and we're going to launch it on a Sagitta Super Heavy. So let's see how that works out. The fuel on the tug is locked, and as you can see, our Delta V it should be enough. That's a heck of a delay on the sound there, but all right. Sound takes time to propagate, you know off it goes. Lots of wiggliness. Let's see if I turn on SAS temporarily. It's possible I should have auto strutted the tug a little bit better. The tug might be a little bit off-center. But this is a very good window, so I would like to send as much as possible because it doesn't take that much Delta V to capture around Mars. That's very helpful for a lot of payloads. So it might be a few episodes of launches. I hope you don't mind launches. We have core ignition. Booster separation. That took a while. <laughs> Alright, but they're off. flight continues. Okay, fairing separation, and there's our little tug. Not a huge payload, but, you know, right at the payload capacity of this launch vehicle. It'll have to use its own fuel to capture around Mars, of course, but again, we're expecting that to be about a thousand meters per second, and it'll, it should have that. Oh, it's wiggling again. So I'll turn on SAS again. Okay, core stage is done, separation, and we've got good nozzle extension and the right specific impulse. And it's still switching all over the place. Again, I think it's, you well, know, I mean, it should be pretty centered. I don't know. I don't know why it's switching all over the place. But it's under control at least. And we'll have definitely enough Delta V to get us to Mars. So, I'll take what I can get. Let me plot for Mars once it decides to be done. There we go. Okay, we're just turning for the burn here, which is 3,572. But I decided that I wanted to capture the sunset there. Sort of a nice one. Smart ASS was doing some weird stuff when trying to turn, and I've got the attitude adjustment max stopping time to 20, but it was still being very choppy about it. It was like doing little puffs instead of larger puffs. I can't say SAS is doing a great job, but it was it's doing better. 
Okay, well, I think I'm gonna have to... I think I'm gonna have to let the engine turn now. And we need to sell the fuel down. It's taking quite a while to do that. We're a little bit late. Okay, ignition. Node, please. Well, it's not turning to the node at all, Smart ASS. Yeah, Smart ASS is not doing stuff. Smart ASS is just not working. Well, let's see what we get out of this. Timing was a little bit bad. Let's just stop it there. Well, I'll just plot uh, correction. Seems like the simplest thing to do. This stage still has plenty of Delta V for it. Okay, that should be good enough. We'll do that correction. 106 meters per second in 25 minutes. Unfortunately, it looks like a lot of these burns are going to happen in the dark. Okay, I didn't uh, quite catch the burn, but burn is complete. I think at this point I'll just have it do a quick mid-course adjustment instead. It's just too finicky. So, yeah, I'll plot that, and then this will be on its way. To, I mean, it's already on its way to Mars. It's just a matter of getting it closer to Mars. So, I'll make the plot and add the alarm, and I'll see you next with the next launch. Okay, so between launches, I did stop by MTV2 and uh, check it out and do part of its long correction burn. And uh, I've got the alarm here now for that particular burn. Uh, we're topping off the fuels because I accidentally didn't have the clamps doing that during time warp as I lined up with the moon as I usually do. And this is a Pack Rat rover on a Sajita Super Heavy. This is just sort of a test. I don't have Bon Voyage in here yet. Um, we're gonna see whether we can deliver it. Bon Voyage seemed to need a lot of electric charge. Last time I tried to use it very briefly. Um, it seemed to like want big solar panels so I'm not too sure I want that but uh, we'll see we'll see I'll have to try it out maybe there's a setting in it that allow it to do its bon voyage things without having too much electric charge but uh, anyway uh, so the methane is still being topped off this is just a Sajita Heavy it's a very light rover and there we go. All right. So launch. And off it goes. This time it is very stable. Even though you would expect that the rover is a little bit more imbalanced, but we are, of course, controlling from this stage here, so either way, it should be... The payload should not be affecting it that much. But yeah, this time, uh, no wiggles. I don't know why the other one had wiggles. Okay, getting ready for staging on the boosters. And we have booster separation and throttle up. Everything is looking nominal. We're expecting fairing separation at 140 kilometers. And fairing separation. So what we see here is a very oversized uh, sky crane, unfortunately. Well, I just have this one sky crane that I'm going to use, sky crane alpha. And then we have the pack rat rover there. It's got a remote controller right now. Um, but it'll be dependent on orbital communications. It does, I don't think it has a big enough dish to communicate directly back to Earth on its own. So maybe we can get the sky crane to help out, I don't know. But uh, we've got the heat shield underneath, so inflatable heat shield. We'll see if it works out for us. It's a toss up. But yeah, this is uh, from Rover Dude, the, the pack rat rover. And we've got battery packs in the back, solar panels on top. Uh, we've got the communitrons on the tail you can see to communicate with stuff in orbit. And I did drive it around uh, the runway and all to see how that worked out, but you know, that's no guarantee for Mars. 
we have to land it safely first, and that's gonna be a trick. Again, it's very light though, so, you know, we have no excuses. I didn't put parachutes on the sky crane, because I figured it's, again, because it's light, it'll just be using its thrust to land it manually. And we don't, we got the right ISP, but we didn't actually extend the nozzle. I don't know why, sometimes it doesn't, it's all in the same action group, <laughs> so I don't know why. Uh, sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. I think it's safe to just get this antenna deployed now. Rather bigger than I thought it would be, but it's okay, it's not blocking anything. Okay, making orbit, and we certainly have more Delta V than we need for a transfer to Mars. So, we should be good on that part of it. It's all the all the business around Mars itself that's going to be a bit tricky. Yep. Okay, with another sunset behind us, we are getting ready for this burn. It looks like this is the sunset window for Mars. And ignition, I'm gonna keep it at a lower thrust since we're igniting a little bit early. And this time, Smart ASS is working properly, which is nice. Don't know what was up with the previous vehicle. Okay, well that's not bad for an initial burn. I'm gonna plot all the correction burns at about the same time, about three months away, 90 days. And that'll simplify things again. I wanna mostly focus on MTV2. And so, we don't wanna spend a lot of time away from it. And so I'll once again plot this vehicle's correction burn for about the same time. And if they're a little bit off with respect to one another, you know, if I'm busy with one and can't get to another in time, that'll be fine. Because it's not particularly sensitive out here. It's more important that we do the long ion engine burn. And uh, this stage, we'll just have it hang around because even with boil off, it'd be able to help us with 10 meters per second. So. And electric charge seems fine. Uh, the stages don't require that much electric charge. It's more like the Kerbals who need the worst, uh, the most of it worst. So, okay, that, that'll be fine for initial correction. And uh, actually, I don't know why it's not consuming any electric charge right now. Pretty sure, oh, I think this Pack Rat Rover has like an RTG, right? It's actually got, well, that's a little bit dodgy, but it's got an RTG in the back here, so it's providing power right now. I put solar panels just because, but yeah, it's got an RTG in the back. That's why we're not consuming any power right now. So yeah, power-wise, it should be okay. Maybe the RTG will be good enough for Bon Voyage. I don't know if Bon Voyage requires it to be a new vessel for it to be on there. Maybe. So, it might not get added to this on the fly. Okay, I probably shouldn't hang out with this. I need to hop back to MTV2 to do MTV2 things. Ion engine burns. So I'll add this alarm. And I should reduce the 90 days. Next time it should be 89 days because every launch I'm doing on the following day. So, yeah. Okay, um, I'll pop by MTV2 and then we'll do another launch. Okay, I think this will be the final launch of this episode, and it's the one that's the tightest on the Delta V. It's a quest airlock for our station module in orbit around Mars. And uh, I think it is a good idea to make sure that the Kerbals can EVA, of course. And I don't remember if we sent any hydrazine, though, to be honest. But anyway, it's basically the same as the quest airlock on the Mars transfer vehicles. Except, uh, well, uh, we'll take a look at it once the fairings come off. Anyway, it is a Sagita Super Heavy, so run. The lag is real here. <laughs> One reason why this is probably going to be the last launch. Anyway, here we go. 
Uh, things are looking good enough for the Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 ion engine burns. So... I mean, I'm still wondering whether we're going to have enough not only for um, getting there and capturing around Mars, but also coming back, of course. It's tough to say. God, uh, I, the, the Super Heavies seem to be much twitchier than the Sajita Heavies. Anyway, SAS on again. We know what to do when it starts doing that business. There's the monolith in the background there. Okay, we have core ignition. And booster separation. Okay, we've got fairing separation, and there you see the Quest Airlock module, and um, we've got these ED5s, so not the full, uh, whatchamacallit, Sky Crane, just uh, using the ED5s as engines, because otherwise using the RCS to do maneuvers would be a pain. Uh, we've got a KIS container right there, and otherwise a station control module here. It doesn't have a whole lot of Delta V, but it hopefully has enough. I mean, that's basically where we're at. Like I said, it's going to be tight. And I guess since we're in space, I'll just extend this antenna now before I forget. We've got plenty of solar panels. I'll get those out too. It is heavily reliant on the fact that capture around Mars is going to be fairly low delta V and probably also we need to use a tug to bring it in probably so we're sending another tug up the previous tug the one that we launched in this episode had one of the diamond docking ports the propellant only ones at its center line uh, this one will require of course one of the NASA docking systems and so we'll need another tug that has that docking system on its center line Okay, separation of the first stage, and this is still twitchy, good ISP there, yeah, transfer is going to be a bit tight. We may need those ED5s to finish the transfer burn. Don't know exactly how much Delta V I packed in all these tanks that are strapped to the Quest Air Lock there. Oh, maybe we'll just barely have enough and only complete the very tail end of the Mars transfer burn with the ED5s. Okay, there we go. And let's see. Let's plot for Mars. Um, I'll just have MechJev do it. It's been doing a good enough job. Uh, yeah, just just about exactly what we need. <laughs> so, good times. Just like with the previous Sajita Super Heavy launch, it's doing this puffy thing and not turning things properly. I don't know why. Okay, we'll just expend this stage. Alright, uh, that's interesting, the RCS went for a little bit longer, but anyway, uh, separation, okay, but we need to focus on this, uh, we'll just control from here, make sure of that, okay, and throw this down, but we can engage those, and unlock fuels, all the fuels, uh, we have to see this plot doesn't work anymore. I mean, we're looking at 1,000 meters per second to capture around around Mars. So we've got let's see 1,500 here, 1,600, 1,600 altogether. Uh, as far as what's in this container, nothing right now. I just added the container 
It's really hard to actually get to the container for the Kerbals, unfortunately. But anyway, yeah, I didn't actually stock up on anything in particular. Just add the container. So let's see what I'll take to actually get to Mars. Okay, there's an encounter. Doesn't seem too bad. If we just uh, take this normal burn here, then we don't have to do a mid-course adjustment, but I think I'll save on that. And we will do a mid-course adjustment. So let's just quickly do this amount. I don't... Of course, very importantly, we do have the water recycler here as well. So that'll be helpful to our station. Okay, plotting the mid-course adjustment for about 89 days, 88, 89 days. Yeah, it's better to do it as a mid-course adjustment, as expected. Okay, that seems like a fine approach. 26 meters per second as the mid-course adjustment. We can add that alarm. And just for aesthetics, I'm going to bring it out into daylight. Okay, and with this on its way to Mars and three other missions during this episode on their way to Mars, I think it's time to leave it here. And so in the next episode, we'll do many more launches and we'll get all sorts of equipment over there. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.